हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर राजेश घांगल फ्रॉम मानव रचना इंटरनेशनल यूनिवर्सिटी फरीदाबाद टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन मॉड्यूल गैस सॉलिड क्रोमेटोग्राफी थ्योरी प्रिंसिपल एंड इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन अंडर द पेपर क्रोमेटोग्राफिक टेक्निक्स टू आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग दिस मॉड्यूल यू शुड बी एबल टू लर्न अबाउट द बेसिक थ्योरी and principle of gas solid chromatography will be able to learn the function of each major components of gas solid chromatography system will be able to understand the fundamental basis of separation in gas solid chromatography to have an idea about different types of injectors and detectors to have an idea about the operational parameters which can be tweaked upon for better performance in gas solid chromatography as discussed in previous modules chromatography is an analytical chemistry technique which is used for analyzing and separating the compounds from a sample mixture any chromatographic technique in general has two phases the stationary phase and the mobile phase the gas chromatography is used to separate and analyze compounds that can be vaporized without decomposition in this technique the volatile mixture is separated by using a gaseous mobile phase it is an analytical technique which is helpful in separation of constituting components of a mixture thereby providing the information about their amount and molecular composition the output is in the form of a chromatogram detailing the height and the area of the resolved peaks among these various types of chromatographic techniques gas chromatography is used to separate and analyze compounds that can be vaporized without decomposition in gas chromatography the volatile mixture is separated by using a gaseous mobile phase on the basis of difference in stationary phases used gas chromatography can be gas liquid chromatography where the stationary phase is liquid and gas solid chromatography that has solid as a stationary phase gas solid chromatography is used for applications that can broadly be classified or characterized as those that are difficult to achieve by gas liquid chromatography about the ambient temperatures these include the separation of gases solvents and volatile hydrocarbons and halocarbons like compound containing less than 12 carbon atoms and with a boiling point of less than 200 degree centigrade compared with gas liquid chromatography gas solid chromatography reveals better selectivity in case of separation of isotopic and special isomers now taking a note on theory and principle of gas solid chromatography as the name of the technique that is gas solid chromatography consists of a mobile phase that is gaseous in nature and a solid stationary phase the mobile phase is a carrier gas which is inert in nature like helium hydrogen or nitrogen in most of the instruments helium is used as a carrier gas but for better separations hydrogen is a preferred gas solid stationary phase consisting of an active adsorbent powder is filled in the separating tube adsorbent used for stationary phase includes silica gel alumina graphitized carbon blacks etc the stationary phase selectively adsorb and dissolve the volatile components to obtain better results and for maximum column efficiency there should be optimum flow rate of mobile gas phase retention results from adsorption on surfaces with different types and number of active sites providing for complementary selectivity to liquids and an enhanced capability for the separation of isomers 
and isotopomers. The carrier gas can play a significant role in separation process by competing with analyte molecules for adsorption at active sites on the stationary phase. In the case of porous layer open tubular columns, the size, length of the dipoles and polarizability of the adsorbent layer are crucial for the separation of an analyte. In gas solid chromatography, when the columns are covered with molecular sieves like porous polymers and carbon sieves, then separation depends on the mechanism in which the analytes smaller than the size of pores can penetrate into the grain of adsorbent and causing relatively larger retention times. However, compounds that are too large to enter the pores will only retain relatively weak absorption on active sites on the outside of the particle thus giving shorter retention times while separation on the columns coated with aluminium oxide is based on the strong dipole interactions the selectivity of gas solid chromatography can be modified by the selection of carrier gas and by the use of gas mixtures one or more of the following features may be detrimental for application in gas solid chromatography sample size dependent retention and asymmetric peak shapes resulting from non linear adsorption isotherms presence of chemically active adsorption sites resulting in irreversible binding of some analytes high surface areas and absorption energies of adsorbents can result in excessive, excessive retention for compounds of low volatility and for polar compounds. Some adsorbents are catalytically active. Reproducible preparations of adsorbents is generally more difficult than for the liquids. Now let's talk about the components of the machine. Gas chromatograph. The comp equipment generally consists of cylinder which contains the carrier gas and supplies it into the instrument Fro flow regulator that controls the flow of carrier gas into the instrument an injector that helps in loading of the sample gas chromatographic column which actually where actually the separation takes place temperature regulated oven that helps in maintaining the temperature during whole of the separation process. Detector which is present at the short distance from the column that helps in detection of the analyte after the separation. And last is the data system or the recorder where the data is recorded and generated. Now we will discuss about the working of the instrument. Most modern commercial gas chromatograph systems operate in the following way first the inert carrier gas such as helium is supplied from the gas cylinders to the gas chromatograph machine or the instrument where the pressure is regulated using manual or electronic that is the pneumatic pressure controls the regulated carrier gas is supplied to the inlet and subsequently flows through the column and into the detector the sample is injected into the heated injection port on the top of the machine where it is volatilized and carried into the column by the carrier gas the sample is separated inside the column the sample separates by differential adsorption of analytes between the mobile and the stationary phases on elution from the column the carrier gas and analytes pass into a detector which responds to some of the physiochemical property of the analytes and generate an electronic signal measuring the amount of analyte present the data system then produces 
an integrated chromatogram. Now discussing about the in individual components, we will first discuss about the carrier gas. Carrier gas or the mobile phase in, is an important component in gas solid chromatography. Carrier gas should be inert in nature such as helium, hydrogen or nitrogen. In 90% of the gas chromatograph systems, extremely pure helium is used. It is inert and non-reactive in nature. However, for better separations, hydrogen is a preferred gas, but it is avoided due to its explosive nature. Pressurized gas cylinders are readily available or supplied by the vendors as steel tanks with two-stage pressure regulator to regulate the gas coming into the instrument and then to supply the various parts to of the instrument gas chromatogram have control mechanism modern instruments have electronic that is the pneumatic pressure controller while the older ones had manual pressure controller via regulators the high grade helium referred to as 5-9 gas is used in the process. Now what is this 5-9 gas? Basically the 5-9 gas means that the gas being used in the chromatic gas chromatography is 99.999% .999 pure. Sometimes for a few applications that require extremely pure gas, helium gas entering the separating column is passed through a, at least a resin trap that removes the oxygen, hydrocarbons, trace analytes and water vapor which might interfere with the analysis part or degrade the column or might inter interfere with the detection system also. Special attention should also be given to the purity of the tubing which is used to connect the cylinder that is the source and the gas chromatogram that is the machine. The next component happens to be the injectors. After passing through the resin trap, purified helium enters the injector where it acts like the mobile phase by pushing the analytes through the separation column. Basically, the chromatographic process begins when the sample is introduced into the column without disrupting the flow in the column. Here the sample is volatilized and the resulting gas entrained into the carrier stream entering the gas chromatograph column. Numerous types of injectors are available like on-column injector, split-splitless injector, cryogenic focusing injector etc. However, split-splitless injector is the most commonly used injector in gas chromatograph. The split splitless injector operates in two modes that is split and splitless split modes. If a sample solution is containing highly concentrated levels of analytes like that of parts per thousand PPT, the injector is operated in a split mode that is in the split mode only a fraction of sample is injected truly enters the separation column and the rest is vented to the atmosphere. Due to high concentration of analytes in the sample solution, even the small fraction of analytes in the solvents are adequate for the identification and quantification. For sample solutions containing low level of analytes like parts per million that is ppm or parts per billion ppb the injector is operated in a dual or splitless split mode. In this dual mode, when the sample is injected, the injector operates in a splitless mode and whole of the injected volume is pushed onto the separating column. But if this splitless mode is continued throughout the run, the peak will be non-symmetric and will interfere in peak integration. To overcome this problem, split mode is switched on approximately 30 to 60 seconds after injection. This dual splitless split mode 
permits majority of the sample to load onto the column while clearing remaining samples to allow for a clean well shaped chromatographic peak highly volatile analytes that cannot be analyzed in standardized gas chromatographic conditions are examined using a cryogenic focusing injector the bottom of the injector which encompasses the head of the capillary column contains liquid nitrogen it is a cryogenic fluid this cryogenic fluid cools the column and results in condensation of analytes at the head of the column once the analyte enters the column that is after the injection the liquid nitrogen is removed and column oven is heated to analyze the volatile analytes another consideration is with respect to volume of sample being analyzed which is in extremely small quantity and requires precise handling to generate reproducible results for this auto samplers helps in introduction of samples automatically into the inlet thereby providing better reproducibility and time optimization for any experiment its validity stands upon the reproducibility of the results while handling with low volume samples chances of getting an error is high due to manual loading or manual injector to overcome this problem auto samplers are used in gas chromatographic machines auto samplers can be used to inject up to 150 samples instantaneously and precisely the same amount of sample injected every time although gas chromatographic systems have choice for manual insertion of samples also but it is very rarely used because these automatic samplers can consistently and precisely reproduce small volume injections and save a considerably labor cost and time next important component of gas chromatographic is the oven that helps in regulation of temperature of column whereas where the separation occurs samples of gas chromatography must be converted into and maintained in vapor state throughout the separation process the temperature of the separating column is controlled by the help of a oven as it keeps the column at temperatures from 40 degree centigrade to 400 degree centigrade ovens heats rapidly and can be cooled using a fan to vent out hot air as the rear of oven thereby providing thermal control for better separation of analyte the column is provided a support system also so that it prevents it from touching the oven walls and can damage the column the injector and the detector connections are also within this gas chromatographic columns or the temperature regulated ovens depending on the operations gas chromatography can be performed either isothermal or temperature controlled early gas chromatographs performed isothermal operations and a steady temperature was maintained throughout the analysis while in temperature programmed operations oven temperature is regulated as per the requirement for gas chromatograph separation and temperature program fed into the system temperature controlled allows separation of chemical analytes spanning a range of vapor pressure in a single analysis temperature is an important factor while analyzing the complex mixtures now this is the most important component in analytical gas chromatograph that is the columns columns are important as quality of separation depends on the properties of the column used early gas chromatographs used to have a typical 1 to 5 meter long and 1 to 5 mm internal diameter however micro packed column used later on had less than 1 mm of internal diameter limitation of packed column 
was improper resolution due to their length as the pressure drops resisted the gas flow within the column. This restriction was overcome by the use of capillary column in which the stationary face is coated on the inner wall as a thin film. Advantage of capillary column over packed column is increased separation efficiency, ability to work at lower temperature using capillary columns, thereby giving better separation in the same time or same separation in the shorter time. Results have been obtained up to 10 times faster than the packed columns. Due to lesser amount, amounts of stationary phase in the capillary column, its capacity is limited. Therefore, it has a special sample introduction methods and sensitive, sensitive detectors. The column is coiled to fit the temperature regulated oven, that is the column oven, and is connected with the injector and the detector inlets. Glass columns have been the ideal choice in gas chromatography by most of the researchers. However, earlier various other uh, column mat materials such as nickel, copper and stainless steels were also being used. Coiled gas capillary tubing was in culture for quite a long time, but due to fragile nature of glass, fused silica columns which are based on fiber optic technology uh, that are highly flexible, durable and chemically inert were later employed in gas chromatography. In recent times, packed column is almost completely been replaced by the flexible fused silica tubings. Wall coated open tubular, what we call uh, W cot capillary columns. Quality monitoring of the fused silica column is done by checking the point defects and general strength of the capillary tubing. During this step of quality check, internal surface chemistry of the fused silica is also verified so as to meet the application for which it is intended to be used. As discussed earlier, solid stationary phase consisting of an active adsorbent powder is filled with the separating tube. The most commonly inorganic oxide absorbents are the silica gel and alumina. These are available as spherical porous beads in a wide range of particle sizes with surface area of 5 to 500 meter square gram and pore diameter of 8 to 150 nanometer. Retention is controlled by the specific surface area, surface deactivation method, the thermal history of the adsorbent and the capability of analytes to participate in specific interactions such as hydrogen bonding with surface functional groups. The different surface functional groups that is cyanol groups in the case of silica and aluminium ions in the case of alumina result in different selectivities for these adsorbents. Next is the adsorbents are the carbon adsorbents. Graphitized carbon black and carbon molecular sieves are the main types of carbon adsorbents used in gas solid chromatography. Graphitized carbon black have low porosity and a surface area from about 5 to 100 meter square per gram. Ideally, they behave as non-specific adsorbents with retention dominated by dispersion interactions. However, presence of a small number of polar sites associated with surface oxygen complexes introduces strong specific interactions with polar compounds. Coating graphitized carbon black with phosphoric acid or potassium hydroxide facilitates the separation of organic acids and amines. Carbon molecular sieves consist of small graphite crystallites cross-linked to yield a disordered cavity aperture structure. They are microporous with large surface area 
and a pronounced retention of organic compounds. Primary application include the separation of inorganic gases, hydrocarbons containing less than 4 carbon atoms and the separation of small polar molecules such as water and formaldehyde. Other adsorbents used are molecular sieves and porous organic polymers. The molecular sieves are microporous with tunnel-like pore structures. Molecular sieves also called as zeolites are artificially prepared alkali metal aluminosilicates. For gas solid chromatography, the most common types are calcium amino silicate. Retention is primarily controlled by molecular size. Whether the analyte can enter the pore structure of the molecular sieve and by the strength of adsorption interaction with the internal pore surface. They are used primarily for the separation of gases and low molecular weight hydrocarbons. Next adsorbent which we will study is the porous organic polymers. Porous organic polymer beads are prepared from different monomers and cross-linking reagents with a range of surface areas and pore sizes and are used in gas solid chromatography. Compared with other adsorbents, their surface are relatively inert, facilitating the separation of polar compounds with little difficulty. Beads with pore diameter of nearly about 10 nanometer are used primarily for the separation of gases and those with large pore diameter for volatile organic compounds. Now we will look upon the various techniques for coating adsorbent layer onto the column. The quality of the column strongly depends on the technique of coating. In case of porous layer open tubular columns, the most popular are static coating, dynamic coating and in situ polymerization. In static coating technique, the column is filled with a stable suspension solution. Then the solvent is evaporated under vacuum, thereby producing a coating layer on the capillary walls. Finally, the wet coating layer is dried by a continuous gas flow. In dynamic coating technique, the suspension solution plug is first inserted into the column using high pressure gas and then is pushed through the capillary column at a steady speed, leaving a coating layer behind the meniscus of the plug. For the preparation of column by in situ polymerization technique, a solution of monomer and catalyst is inserted into the column and the column is heated for polymerization, thereby producing a porous layer inside the column. The residual solvents, monomers and catalysts are removed from the column by gas purging. The selected technique influences the capacity factor coating efficiency, selectivity and inertness of the prepared column. Next important component of gas chromatograph is detectors. Detection of an analyte in gas chromatography plays an important role in separation process. As the whole idea of analyzing the sample will be wasted if the analyte is not detected. Detector detects the sample component or the analytes on the basis of their physiochemical properties. It amplifies the response and generates an electronic signal thereby generating a chromatogram. As the sample gas stream comes out from the column, the detector monitors the separated com components of the gaseous sample and signals are interpreted after the data acquisition. Different type of detectors exist in the market, however, choosing among them is mainly based on the application for which is it is being used. Chemistry of the annihilate, sensitivity and on whether the qualitative 
or the quantitative data is required. Mainly used detectors in gas chromatography are flame ionization detector, thermal conductivity detector, electron capture detector. Other commercially available less used detectors include such as photo ionization detector, nitrogen phosphorus detector, atomic emission detector. Now thermal conductivity detector, it is one of the earliest gas chromatographic detectors which uses helium as a carrier gas and its principle is based on the thermal conductivity of analytes and the carrier gas. It means thermal conductivity detector is based on change in heat absorbing property of the gas effluent when the carrier gas is altered with any analyte. Another most common detector in gas chromatography happens to be the flame ionization detector that relies on the formation of gaseous ions from organic molecules combusted in the hydrogen air flame. In last couple of decades, mass selective detectors or the mass spectrometers, a less expensive instrument, have dramatically transformed the practice of gas chromatography. Last in the instrumentation of gas solid chromatography comes the data system. The data system helps in acquisition of the data generated by detectors after the separation process. The data system receives analog signal from detector and digitalizes to record it as separated peaks in the form of chromatogram due to chromatographic separation. It automatically reports peak retention time, peak areas, etc. and the software displays the result in automated manner. Thus, gas chromatography can be used to perform various quantitative and qualitative operations, thereby assisting in sample identification and quantitation. So after getting the technical knowledge about the instrumentation of gas solid chromatography, we can uh, look upon the basic concepts in this technique like concept and structure of capillary columns, concept of uh, carrier gas as a mobile phase, concept of uh, solid stationary phase, temperature or pressure programming. A thorough knowledge of above set points can give an idea about the operational parameters which can be tweaked for better performance of the uh, gas chromatography. It helps in addressing the issues like general effect of the column dimension, temperature programming, carrier gas type and flow rates that is on the separation of detection limits and peak retention times. Thus deep understanding can help in the researchers to look for uh, trade-offs between these performance factors. In the end we can summarize uh, what all we have studied today in the following points like we learnt about the basic theory and principle of gas solid chromatography. We learned the function of each major component of gas solid chromatographic system. We also discussed the fundamental basis of separation in gas solid chromatography. We also got to know about the different types of injectors and detectors. Lastly, we also learned about the operational parameters which can be tweaked about for better performance of the gas solid chromatography. Thank you.